Hello friends, let me present to you the FJ43 from AK Interactive. We'll start by priming the model using the black primer and macro filler. As you can see, our model is divided into different parts and pieces. This will help us paint it easily and we don't need to worry about some pieces being in the way and making it hard to reach the spots we want to paint. This is very helpful and we recommend you do it this way as well. This primer paint is not only very resistant, it is also extremely easy to use. So if you don't know yet what kind of paint to use for priming your vehicles, be sure to check out the video we made about priming, which is a part of the Modeling from Zero series. When it comes to priming our projects, it is very important to cover the surface completely. Don't leave any plastic sticking out. How can you achieve this? By painting by panels, by parts. This way you make sure that there is no plastic still visible, as this could affect the integrity of the paint that will apply afterwards and make it significantly more fragile. Take a look at how we can find cheap solutions that we have readily available at home for holding the parts comfortably, like this clothespin. They will be very helpful for painting, for example, wheels. When the primer coat is dry, we can proceed with grimy grey paint, which will be applied all over the vehicle. Remember that white colored paints need to be diluted a little more, as they have a thicker pigment. If you're wondering why we've chosen to use white for this car, keep in mind that 35% of all the cars in the world are white, and it is the most common color for cars. After this fact, we'll apply lights to the grimy grey color with the new Dual XO paint, specifically the Robot White. As you can observe, this coat is applied with much more precision. We only apply it in areas that we want to be lighter. The grimy grey will still be visible in the majority of the vehicle. This will be the first phase of applying lights, as some areas will be highlighted more so than the others. And, similarly, it will also be the first phase of weathering. When the car paint is exposed to the sun, it will get burned and lose intensity in some areas. After we have finished this step, we will use the third generation black paint to cover up all the parts and areas that we want to be black, as well as those that will be painted with metallic paint afterwards. This will accentuate the metallic colors as they will appear brighter and more intense if applied over a black background. I'll now show you the areas that will be painted in black and then we'll skip over to the next clip when they're already painted so that the video is not unnecessarily long. If you forget to paint any of them, that's okay, you'll have time to correct it later on. When we're painting a vehicle, whether it's a civil or a military one, it's important to look up reference images as they will give us a better idea of what the interior looks like. The next step will be to prepare our vehicle for the following phase of painting. And we'll do that by varnishing it using the satin varnish. In our case, we're applying it with an airbrush. Once the varnish had dried, we apply the panel liner for grey and blue camouflage. Don't get confused with the name, the color is perfect to give shadow to white vehicles. As you can see, we apply it a little carelessly. This is because we want it to also spread over the car's surface to give it more chromatic variety and make it more interesting so that it's not just plain white. We leave the panel liner centered in the area that we want to darken, but we also extend it to the adjacent areas to create different pigmentations and shading that will provide more chromatic richness to our model. Notice how this is much more subtle in the area of the hood of the car, but take a look at the cargo area in the back. We have allowed for the product to pull more there as this will represent the dirt that is typical for this kind of cars to accumulate in the cargo area. Moreover, we're applying it very diluted to the bodywork as well. And after leaving it for about 10 minutes to take effect, we'll blend the panel liner in areas where it could have accumulated. Let's start working on the transparent parts. AK Interactive offers a range of paints specifically designed for painting this kind of pieces. We just need to apply the undiluted paint directly over the piece and, once dry, it will be ready to be placed on our model. If you're not sure what color you should use for these transparent parts, 
look up images of the real vehicle or take a look at the instruction guide in which you'll find information and details about all the products that you'll need throughout the project. While these pieces are drying, there are some parts which we have forgotten to paint in black. So now we'll fix that before placing the headlights. We'll use aluminum to paint the interior of the headlights. Remember to add 10% of water to metallic paints so that they work smoothly. Let's move on to chipping. For this step, we'll use exclusively these two colors, dark rust and black. As you can see, with these two colors we can make practically any rusty tone that we can think of. We only need to change up the proportion of the colors and we can achieve an incredible variety of different tones. So remember that these two colors are essential for working on rust effects. When it comes to the weathering of our vehicles, we should think about what their real life would look like. In this case, as it's a car used by a gorilla that would certainly suffer damages, it's inevitable that the car would have stopped by a garage many times. So, without any doubt, the hood of this car would have been lifted thousands of times. For this reason, we won't hold back when weathering this part of the vehicle. The same thing goes for the tailgate. It would be moved constantly to load weapons and explosives, so this piece would be in quite bad shape. If you want to see an example of used cars that are white, take a look at the vehicles parked in a construction site and pay attention to their condition. When working on chipping, focus on the parts that would suffer more from wear and tear, because of cords, ropes, hands, people sitting, boxes moving around and things like that. Try to imagine the life of the vehicle and use it when working on the weathering effects. And the same can be said about the bumper. The sides and the corners of the bumper are certainly going to be deteriorated. Just like the suspension of the vehicle. If we want to age our vehicle quickly, the dry brush and the trick with the sponge are essential. They will help you many times. For example, we've worked on the bodywork and now we'll move on to the seats. And we'll use a piece of sponge to imitate the foam sticking out of the ripped seat. Keep in mind what we said before. If you're not sure about what any of these pieces should look like, Google it. Look up an image of a used or damaged seat and keep it on the screen of your phone or computer while you try to replicate it. As you can see, in this video we are not using any technique that will be too complicated. We can achieve this using an airbrush, a paintbrush and an old sponge. This one is certainly one of the easiest to follow tutorials that we have made. And we do it this way to encourage you to take your first steps into this modeling world and to make it more accessible for you. You don't need the latest, most expensive equipment to finish your projects. Let's continue with our model and start working on the wheels. If you recall, we already primed them in black so now we can proceed with rubber black. As the name suggests, this color is perfect for painting wheels. If we want to speed up our painting process, we can use a hair dryer to dry the paint more quickly. Once the wheel is dry, we'll add the rim. We use the same weathering techniques on the rims, using the brush and the sponge. The next step will be to place all the transparent pieces. We place them using a toothpick and some blue tack. First we do the dry fit, then we apply some plastic glue. And although it looks a bit more complicated than it is, in the end we manage to place it correctly. If you know of a method that works better, please leave it in the comment section below. It's extremely important that when placing all these transparent parts, we never use cyanoacrylate glue, as this kind of glue would dull and ruin them. The correct glue for this step will be glue made for plastic or white glue. Now we'll paint the SPG-9, which is a recoilless gun developed by the Soviet Union. 
and obviously for painting something from the Soviet Union we'll use Russian green as the base color. Here's a little trick. To highlight any green color we can use yellow. In this case the yellow we are using is very saturated. The color is called laser yellow. We apply it from above over the mount and the gun itself. If you look up reference images for this recoilless gun, you'll notice that there is a small part on the side with a different color. To replicate this we've chosen orange-brown, as it's the color that resembles it the most from the options we have available. We suppose that this different colored area is some kind of thermal protection for the gunner. This should help prevent him from getting burned when aiming. Finally, with light green we can apply some final lights in the areas that we want to stand out more. After this step, the basic paint of our gun would be finished, but it would be strange for the car to be completely damaged and the gun to be brand new. So let's add some chipping and scratches to the gun as well. For this we'll use gun metal. We apply it on the corners and the low part of this anchor plate. The process is the same that we followed while working on the bumper, which is to apply small scratches with the tip of the brush, which we then connect slightly using a sponge. Don't try to argue that this technique is hard to replicate. Once we have placed the gun inside the vehicle, our model would be almost finished. But. At this point, don't you think that our pickup is missing something to be a true guerrilla car? You're right, we need dust. So to do that, we'll use the Africa dust diluted with a fruit scented thinner for liquid pigments. Just like you can see, we apply it over the entire surface of the wheel. On top of that, we also create some stains in the lower area of the vehicle. This product can also be applied with an airbrush. And you can obtain truly great results with it. Sometimes we apply a bit of thinner before using the product itself. This will help us achieve that this African dust spreads over the surface of the vehicle and gets to all the areas that we want. Moreover, it will also add some randomness to the dust deposits, which will make our vehicle appear much more realistic. As you can see, after the product has dried, the finish is quite convincing. So now we only need to touch up some areas to, for example, remove the excess of the dust on the side of the wheel. For this, we use a cotton swab. And after this step, our vehicle is almost ready. But remember that we can't have a gun and no projectiles. So we'll paint some projectiles using the same colors that we've used previously to paint the recoilless gun. After we have painted the parts, we'll finish the last couple of details and we'll glue them in the back of the vehicle with some white glue. By using the white glue, we make sure there won't be any stain or mark from the glue itself after it has dried. And on top of that, with glue we ensure that the parts will be set firmly and they won't move around or get lost if we need to move our model. Well, now, after the final step, our model is finished and ready. We're aware that this vehicle won't win prizes at any contest, but we hope that it will change your perception of modeling and it will convince you that it's not as hard as they make it out to be. Anyone, you included, can build and paint a model and make it look nice using very few materials and products while knowing just a handful of techniques. Until next time!